the Tasmanian tiger is back after 80 years of extinction. Fact or hoax? This shocking headline has stunned both the scientific community and wildlife enthusiasts alike. Imagine an animal thought to be long extinct suddenly reappearing, like a ghost from the past. It seems that the story of the thylacine, Tasmania's mysterious predator, is moving from legend toward reality. Hopeful images and rumors have led many to believe that this creature might still be lurking somewhere in Australia's wilderness. Today's video will delve into the astonishing evidence, breakthrough technology and species revival, and the enormous challenges of the thylacine revival project, Tasmania's iconic species. Let's get started. The thylacine, scientifically known as Thylacinus cynocephalus, meaning pouched dog with a wolf's head, is often mistaken for a wolf due to its strong build. Some even call it the Tasmanian tiger because of the black stripes running down its back, resembling a tiger. However, the intriguing truth is that the thylacine is actually a marsupial, more closely related to animals like kangaroos and koalas than wolves. As a nocturnal predator, the thylacine hunted small animals like wallabies, birds, and rodents. Known for its patient, persistent hunting style, it would chase prey until its quarry was exhausted. In the wild, thylacines typically lived in eucalyptus forests, wetlands, and grasslands, where their striped coats provided effective camouflage. Thylacines were solitary creatures, forming pairs only during mating season or when a female was caring for young. Interestingly, both male and female thylacines had pouches. The female's pouch nurtured and protected her young, similar to other marsupials, while the male's smaller pouch protected its reproductive organs. The young would stay in the mother's pouch for about three months, continuing to rely on her for a few additional months before becoming fully independent. This period is crucial as it allows young thylacines to learn essential hunting and survival skills. Each thylacine typically maintained its own hunting territory, marking it with scent to avoid conflicts with others. A significant breakthrough in understanding thylacine evolution came from a 2017 study by White, Mitchell, and Austin. Mitochondrial genome analysis showed that thylacines once existed as two separate populations in eastern and western mainland Australia before the last ice age. This genetic split helps explain why, by the time Europeans arrived, thylacines had low genetic diversity, making them vulnerable to environmental changes and human pressures. Although once widely spread across mainland Australia, the thylacine managed to survive in Tasmania until the 1930s, which ultimately became its last refuge. Their extinction resulted from a tragic series of human impacts, ecological changes, and disease. Combined, these factors hastened the downfall of one of Tasmania's most powerful apex predators. When Europeans began settling in Tasmania in the early 19th century, thylacines were seen as a significant threat to sheep and livestock, a reputation that, while questionable, proved disastrous for them. Attacks on sheep, whether real or merely rumors, led to the thylacine becoming enemy number one among rural farmers. Local authorities quickly responded by implementing bounty hunting programs. One notable example was in 1830 when the Van Diemen's Land Company began paying for each thylacine killed. From 1888 to 1909, the Tasmanian government offered one British pound for each adult and 10 shillings for each juvenile thylacine. Over 2,184 bounties were paid out, though the actual number killed was undoubtedly higher. This only accelerated their population's decline, driving an already vulnerable species toward extinction. However, direct hunting was not the only threat to thylacines. Simultaneously, their natural habitats were being severely encroached upon by agricultural development and expanding settlements. The vast forests where thylacines once hunted and hid were gradually transformed into farmland. Grasslands that once served as prime hunting grounds were plowed and subdivided, forcing thylacines to contend with severe habitat reduction. 
This habitat loss not only eliminated their living spaces, but also threatened their food sources, making population maintenance increasingly difficult. Additional pressure came from introduced species, particularly wild dogs. These dogs, with their own hunting instincts and competition for food, forced thylacines into a brutal struggle for survival. As a species with low genetic diversity, adapting to such harsh environmental changes was almost impossible for them. Once their ecosystem was disrupted and food sources dwindled, thylacine populations could not recover, leaving them increasingly fragile in the face of unpredictable changes. Beyond human threats and competition, disease also played a role in the thylacine's demise. A disease similar to canine distemper was discovered in captive thylacines near the end of the species' existence. While there is no clear evidence of it spreading in the wild, the disease's impact on captive populations indicates the potential for wild thylacines to have been affected as well, further weakening any remaining individuals. By the late 1920s, thylacines had become extremely rare. One of the most notable events was the last recorded wild thylacines capture in 1930. A farmer named Wilf Batty in Tasmania shot a male thylacine, which had been seen around his property for weeks. This incident marked the near end of the species' existence in the wild. Although there were last-minute efforts to protect thylacines, such as a proposal to establish a sanctuary in 1928, it was already too late. Even in their final days, zoos worldwide were hunting for live thylacine specimens, further clouding their fate. These conservation efforts were insufficient to reverse the damage the species had endured, and on September 7, 1936, the last thylacine died in captivity at the Hobart Zoo in Tasmania. To many, the thylacine's extinction may seem like a distant event, but its impact on Tasmania's ecosystem was profound, with potential long-term consequences. The thylacine once served as a keystone species, a key in maintaining the ecological balance in this region. As an apex predator, it helped control prey populations, preserved biodiversity, and prevented disease spread. The loss of this apex predator threw the ecosystem into turmoil, leading to a host of problems for both the environment and humans. This phenomenon, known as trophic downgrading, describes how the absence of an apex predator disrupts the food chain. As a result, populations of prey species like feral cats, rabbits, and wallabies in Tasmania surged. This might seem like a small change, but its ripple effect was extensive, resembling a domino effect. One visible consequence is the alarming rise in animal roadkill, with an astonishing 32 animals struck every hour. This scene serves as a silent warning about the severe imbalance plaguing the ecosystem. But this ecological tragedy does not end there. Without thylacines, Tasmanian devils lost a natural competitor, leading to their rapid population increase. However, this growth brought genetic problems, such as inbreeding and lack of genetic diversity. This vulnerability made Tasmanian devils susceptible to a transmissible cancer known as devil facial tumor disease, causing their numbers to plummet from around 140,000 to about 20,000. This alarming decline signals not only a disaster for this species, but also a wake-up call regarding the importance of apex predators in the food chain. Reviving the thylacine is thus not merely an ambitious scientific endeavor, but a necessary step in restoring ecological balance to Tasmania. Thylacines once played a crucial role in regulating prey populations, preventing overgrazing, and protecting the environment from degradation. Their return could reactivate a long-lost natural mechanism, restoring an ecosystem that was once resilient. With the bold strides of the Thylacine Revival Project launched in 2022 by Colossal Biosciences, the dream of resurrecting this iconic animal is becoming more attainable. The project has drawn attention not only for its ambitious scale, but also due to the involvement of notable personalities. Big names like the Hemsworth brothers, athlete Tom Brady, and star Paris Hilton are supporting colossal biosciences.
They not only back thylacine's revival, but also hope to reintroduce it into the wild as a vital step in restoring biodiversity. An exciting prospect emerges. The thylacine, once a dominant predator, could help restore Tasmania's ecosystem to its natural balance, bringing native species back into ecological harmony. However, bringing back the thylacine is no small feat. Colossal Biosciences has been utilizing the most advanced gene editing technology, particularly CRISPR, to make over 300 genetic changes in the fat-tailed dunnart, a marsupial closely related to the thylacine. Through these alterations, they hope to recreate an animal genetically similar to the ancient thylacine. This process is complex, demanding not only precision, but also assurances that the revived species can adapt and survive in the wild. Andrew Pask, one of the project's pioneering scientists, cannot hide his excitement. He describes the breakthroughs achieved in the past 18 months as unprecedented. Starting with small genetic modifications, the team has reached an impressive 300 changes, a milestone that opens doors to the future of de-extinction technology. The next phase involves using modern reproductive techniques to stimulate egg production in the fat-tailed dunnart, transforming them into surrogate mothers for future thylacine embryos. In the coming years, Colossal Biosciences hopes to produce the first generation of thylacines using this technology. They are also exploring the potential of genetic technology to protect endangered species, such as the Tasmanian devil, which faces threats from a dangerous infectious cancer. Colossal Biosciences believes that within five years, we may witness the arrival of the first thylacines. And in 10 years, this species could roam Tasmania once again. This would mark a milestone not only in conservation, but in biological history. If successful, this project will not only revive the thylacine, but also unlock the potential to bring back many other extinct animals and protect species currently on the brink. Thank you for watching till the end. If you found the story of the thylacine and the efforts to revive this extinct species fascinating, please leave a comment and let us know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on more exciting videos. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next video.